Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Steve from Legendary Garage Sale Finds. And in this episode, we're going over my amazing experiences at the St. Tammany Comic Con. And I can't wait to show you all the great books I picked up. But firstly, I got to meet one of my childhood heroes who I have very fond memories of punching Cobra in the G.I. Joe movie and in the comic books. I'm speaking none other than Sergeant Slaughter, who signed the con exclusive print right here. And he also signed his first appearance in the comic books. I must admit, I was a bit awestruck. I had never met a G.I. Joe before, and it was great to meet him. He's a great guy, and I look forward to all the other celebrities that they have at this Comic-Con. So next up, I went by my buddy Keith's booth and looked through all his new $1 books and found quite a stack. I ended up picking up this right here. I ended up coming across a pretty obscure comic series I don't ever really see too often from my childhood, but when I saw it, I knew it immediately was going to be a great pickup and a start of a good day, because I found Age of Reptiles, The Hunt, one through five, now, those who don't know about this series, the artist here, Ricardo Delgado, did a series of dinosaur comic books where there, of course was no dialogue, but the story was told by the facial expressions, by the movement of the dinosaurs. That mixed it with this pretty awesome art. You can see it right here. I loved as a kid growing up because what kid didn't like dinosaurs? So I always looking for this series, but never come across it so when i found it and my buddy keeps one dollar bins which i got for cheaper than a dollar i knew it was a no-brainer so i was so happy to pick up this series outside the dollar bin i found swamp thing 33 which is homage to the first appearance of swamp thing And other notable books also picked up were Werewolf by Night 23, the second to last book I needed for this series. And let me show you another one I've been looking forward to reading. Uh, another book series that I wanted to read growing up but never saw, because I was always a fan of crossovers. And that is Tarzan versus Predator at the Earth's core. Now I got all but one in this series, but considering they were about 80 cents, I'm looking forward to uh, catching up on this one and looking for that last issue. I think it's issue three that I need. Yeah, issue three. And lastly, I haven't come across these particular issues of Turok, but this whole stack right here, is the Valiant Turok line. Never seen these later issues before, so I decided to pick them up in this huge stack. So, real thankful I was able to find these at the killer price. Now, next up, I visited a booth that had, I, in my opinion, pretty cheap Swamp Thing. So I picked up a stack of 14 Saga of the Swamp Thing. We got issues from 14 on to 100. I mean, like two to three dollars. So, whenever I see Swamp Thing, they're usually up between five and ten dollars. So, I decided to pick them up when they were just two and three. So, we're happy to pick up these. Now, one of the other key experiences of this con was at a booth titled Willie's Comics. A uh, young vendor uh, basically said, are you the garage sale Godzilla guy? And that was my first recognition from my videos I've ever had anywhere, really. So it, it was quite a treat. In my last video, I talked about my first fan mail. And this was by far my first recognition anywhere of someone who's seen my videos. So I was real thankful to William from Willie Comics for that and uh, 
he also, by chance, had the last issue of Werewolf by Night that I needed. This is number 37. Now, anybody knows who collects this particular series, that any early appearance of Moon Knight is pretty costly. This is, I think, the third appearance of Moon Knight. Let me take a look at it in pretty amazing shape. I can put it all on the screen. It was already in a Mylar. And I think it gave me a pretty good deal on it. It gave me about 60 bucks. And considering it was the last one I needed for my run, I decided to pick it up. So thanks a lot, William. Now, at one of the booths I spent multiple hours on, I found a collection that I found out was a collector who recently had passed away and his nephew was working on selling his uncle's amazing collection and there were upwards at least 20 short boxes mixed with long boxes and I'm not uh, blowing it out of proportion by saying there were multiple keys in each box. There was one box where there were where it was like 20 issues of Wolverine number one and pretty amazing condition but every box I looked though there was something and I knew I could find I knew there's gonna be every obscure issue I was needing to fill certain runs in this collection so I spent pretty much the rest of the con at this booth and I walked away with this stack right here. So I'm gonna go over these books individually because I feel like these deserve the most recognition. So thank you to the comic book guys for the deal I'm gonna talk about here. Let me know what y'all think. So here we have two later issues of Swamp Thing. I got 35 and 39. Before it gets too excited, there wasn't a John Constantine in, in the boxes that I saw. Now, here's one of the early Swamp Things. I'll show it to y'all. Number 11. Pretty decent shape. It has that classic damsel bound by some kind of creature on the cover, which I believe the 70s was known for. And surprisingly, I didn't have this one, so I was really happy to pick it up. By far, one of my favorite Swamp Thing covers here. And got also issue 16. Nineteen. Oh, I'm sorry, 21 and 22. Next up, I put together a small little stack of Daredevil that I thought was pretty, pretty well priced. Here we have 74. Uh, 95 and 96. Nice little Black Widow cover there. Now, as far as I didn't have this book, but it's the final issue of the Marvel Godzilla series, so number 24. Here's an upgrade from the one I have, I think. In real amazing shape. And for nostalgic sake, sake, I picked up the Dark Crystal number one. Fond memories of watching this back in the 80s. Now to fill up my Conan run, I finally found the elusive, to me, 127. And here we have giant size werewolf number five. Pretty awesome shape. I have earlier 
giant size werewolves, but not as good a shape as this one. Now, one of my favorite finds that uh, I look back on, looking back on it, I wish I had looked one more time for the other last few books I need in my Conan run, but I found one of the very hard ones to find in any good of shape for affordable price. We have Conan issue 10. Not too bad. It's binding is where the problem is right here. You see that right there. But still, it's all there. Now my last three books make up the better finds in this collection that I was willing to pay for. There were many other books I could have made a bigger stack with, but I didn't have that much funds left by this time in the uh, show. So here we have Amazing Spider-Man 165. And one of my surprising finds, I talked about this series several times in my past few videos uh, of the Native American superhero, Red Wolf. And I found what I think is one of his earliest, earliest appearances. We have Marvel Spotlight number one. I don't think it's his first appearance. I do believe when I researched it, he made an earlier appearance in the Avengers line. I believe Avengers 80 and 81, which I keep on the lookout for. But this, which I read recently, foretells the origin of the Red Wolf and of Johnny Wakely, if I'm saying that correctly. Looks pretty nice in the Mylar. In pretty good shape. It's got one ding right here that can be pressed out, but extremely fragile. Yeah, I found that out reading it. Now, for the very last book, which I was amazed to find, and I know it's a well sought after book in the Iron Man series, and given the content, I was very had to find it, happy to find it, just because of the message it sends. And that is, of course, Iron Man 128, the Demon in the Bottle cover and story. This one is just a small example of the great books they had in this collection and in pretty good shape. I got to bring it closer. I think this is a prime candidate for slabbing, which I am really considering doing. See no ticks or anything here. I'm probably not going to open this book in fear that I will ding it. But uh, there were numerous keys from all sorts of series, especially the Uncanny X-Men. But those were pretty well priced to the point, including like the Phoenix Saga, which I'd love to have, but didn't feel much like paying uh, their asking price for it. But I was really happy with this stack of books that you just saw me go over. And I think I got a pretty good deal. Considering the early appearance of Red Wolf, this particular key, and the early Daredevil and Swamp Thing, I believe my my grand total was 245. So considering this particular sought after book, I was very, very happy with that, that, that price. You can let me know what you think about that deal and all the other books I picked up. And down in the comments below, I was always like answering comments, good or bad. And you can tell me if I got totally ripped off, if you want to. But I'm really happy with the books I picked up and the amazing experiences at the show. And looking forward to the next one. So uh, lastly, I wanted to say thank you once again to William uh, Willie Comics. He said he was setting up in two weeks time at the next show here in Baton Rouge, which I'm letting everybody know out there that I will be setting up at for my first show, bringing along comics, toys, games, all this stuff you see here in the back at, at uh, the, here's a flyer, at the NBC Suites, 
in Baton Rouge, May 4th. So if you just happen to be in the area, come by, check it out. I do believe the admission is like only a dollar. So next to free, you can't get any better than that. And if you see the videos and want to come by and say hi, I will be there with everything, comics, toys, video games, VHS, DVDs, all this stuff. So until then, thank you for watching. Hope to see you at the show.